Welcome to Final Third TV. This week we're going to discuss uh, the drinking culture in 90s Premier League football, or at least mid to early 90s Premier League football. It's not uh, a niche video at all. No. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a weird topic because neither of us would remember No. You know this this period of football, but we both read the latest issue of The Blizzard. There's a piece in it from Rob Smy, Rob Smith? Oh, I'd say Smith. One Smith. of my lecturers has the same name, yeah. so yeah. I'd say Smith. We're saying Smith. Works for Eurosport. Great writer. Um... But he basically is writing about United and Liverpool and the kind of great games uh, series that they do. And he just it's in there about drinking because he's talking about the Spice Boys, but he's also making the point that United might were no no better, no worse at the whole drinking thing. They just won, so they never got it. Yeah. This isn't like to glorify alcohol at all because the, the volume is more what kind of caught us. But basically we'll do this video in such a way that we'll discuss the volume and kind of the ridiculousness of it and then maybe have a little discussion about how, how much of an effect you might think of that or yeah, did yeah. it have an effect at all? That's obviously the other part to address. But... To start with it, this piece obviously goes through the fact that we've already heard through other, like, you know, football lore that, like, Brian Robson would periodically drink 20, 20 pints after a game. 20 pints. All right. Uh, in Imagine this, drinking 20 pints, like, and surviving. I think I've done it once. I've, uh, I've, years ago, like, at a party, and it was. Like, I was still drunk the next day, at 12, in work. Properly pissed. I've, not even I've just never done such a thing. It was dreadful. I get to eight and I go... Yeah, I just go like oh, I just this. Died. This was spread over like a, an afternoon, evening, night thing, but it was really, really rough. But so this is twenty. This is an athlete playing for a team that wins or would eventually go on to win, I suppose. Um, the the smite piece tells you that the 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 Spice Boys is aware of Liverpool's ni- mid nineties team under Roy Evans. He used to go straight to the airport after the game, and actually the away team would be there getting their flight home. They'd be that quick to get there to go to London to have drinks. That's fine. That's that's the party animal side of it. But the funniest part is that they phrase it in such a way as. Well, us guys who weren't the Spice Boys in the Liverpool team, we stayed in, you know, our local in Liverpool and had like, you know, 20 to 25 points, a bottle of porter each and a couple of shots. It's kind of like, oh, so you're the good athletes. You're the good ones. <laughs> you're the, you're the, you're the ones. professionals, you are you? You go for the bright lights of London. I hate that expression, but you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just kind of like 20 to 25 points. And these shots and a bottle of porter. Incredible. <laughs> and these are, these are the big teams. Yeah. These are the, you know, these guys Could are... Could you imagine what was going on at like West Brom and yeah. Norwich? This is, this, these are guys with incredible money and what they would do was they would drink till say four in the morning when you have a lock-in in the pub or whatever but they'd be back at it ten the next morning so you, you never feel the effects as such which it, you just look at it now with modern football and all the, it's incredible absolutely incredible a great story from Dennis Bergkamp's book Stillness and Speed where he says that it's either Sweden Sweden or Denmark that the Arsenal won pre-season I think it's 96 Bergkamp had just joined and they had done their pre-season training in the morning pure fitness you know the usual grueling horrible stuff to do and Berkham goes there for a jog then in the afternoon as extra fitness on his own because he's just that professional. Mm. Fuck. You know they're there. The Dutch. Uh, <laughs> and uh, who does he pass in the pub? But Tony Adams and co. slugging points on pre-season. And fair enough, maybe, you know, the depths of winter, there's nothing else to do. Yeah. 90s cinema wasn't great. It was just, you're in a foreign country. You're drinking points. You're in a foreign country and you're drinking points <laughs> and you're probably never going to go back. Imagine, like, imagine, just, imagine, go, imagine, like, going to a pub and just knocking back points when you're on a preseason tour instead of kind of going out and maybe experiencing a different culture or yeah. doing or just something. Not drinking. Or just not drinking. Yeah, or just taking your fucking job. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is incredible. Like this goes this obviously goes right across the board. Um I'm trying to think of the other one. Oh yeah, they were saying as well in, in the in the Rob Smythe piece, they they turn uh, Smith, they turned around to it and they were saying that um one of the first rounds got by I can't remember what, maybe it was Ruddock, Razor Ruddock. Yeah. Neil Ruddock, yeah, Neil yeah, Razor Ruddock, yeah. He uh, ordered thirty five pound thirty five points as a fir- as a first round, just him for seven people. So seven just the five each. points each. Oh yeah. You know, just seven yeah, seven points. Nice. <laughs> but like it's kinda of like, first round? First first round? Five first. is a good night. Yeah, five <laughs> is a good night. I mean? like, like, yeah. Five is still going home and getting up for work. Yeah. <laughs> but they, these guys run up. But yeah, that's the first part of just kind of the I know if, if, if you're of a certain age and if you live through night, you probably don't think it's as shocking. You probably think now it's probably gone too far. You know, hippie crack, for example. That's our 20 to 25 point footballers. Yeah. It just doesn't compare. No. But when you look back on it, do you think it had an effect? Yeah. <laughs> or, or... Like, that answers the question. Or, close the video, there you right? go, wrap it. <laughs> yeah. um, or do you think that because all of the teams were doing this from 1 to 20, it didn't have as telling an effect? Because my thought immediately was, these are bloody good footballers. Like, you, yeah. look, at, you look at Steve McManaman, I mean, you would not think the chap drank. No. You know, he looks as good an athlete as, say, uh, Thierry Henry. They, they both look, you know, Lean, glowing quick. guys, you know. 
but one of them probably like an animal the other we don't know about but I suspect he didn't you know you, you do never know about these things but uh, that's another thing as well I suppose the secrecy in modern football they protect the footballers more also they're not getting drunk at a dockside pub in Liverpool so it doesn't <laughs> yeah. help when you're doing a, you know issues. but you, you think it had an effect it would, no, it, would, like, it would have to I guess like yeah. I mean if you look like we're talking about early 90s football you look at them in Europe yeah, like, well, ban, banned for the first few years. That's yeah. where they lost most of their stars. But once they get back into it, they were shite. It's pretty like grim. you know what I mean. Um, yeah. Like as you say, obviously, if you're just looking at the Premier League, it wouldn't have had that big an effect because like it's everybody, all you could watch Bar at, at, yeah, at that exactly. stage. So like everybody in in the league was doing it. Let's say as a gross generalization. Yeah. So um, as Smith says in the piece, sorry, just for you, was Opta don't have a points per player per <laughs> week <laughs> ratio, so you can't break it There's down. No so I, I just remember that quick. Sorry, <laughs> but um, yeah, what, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so if you're looking at like Premier League and like like twenty up to first, you're not going to see a big difference because they're all going to be at it. Yeah, like, do you know what I mean? So it's going to be basically a level playing field as if they were not drinking. But then when they got into Europe, it showed up quite a lot because the fitness, fitness. wasn't there, yeah. and like. They just got blown away until they actually sort of coughed, oh, we actually might need to do a bit of professional yeah. shit here because we're professional athletes who need to do a professional job. Professionally. It's, it's professionally. Like, <laughs> and it clearly it clearly affected them. And then like you even look at um, like one of the most tragic examples of it is Paul Gascoigne. Mm. One, of, yeah. one of the most gifted footballers that England have ever produced. And he's completely, he completely wasted it. Like, yeah. Absolutely True very wasted. means, yeah. Yeah. It's like drugs, alcohol, either way, an addiction yeah. of, for all the substance. Like, it's even know. kind of sad watching my football because BT regularly have him on. Yeah, yeah he's just a shell of a man. He's, he's obviously recovering, you know, to, to an extent that it's possible to recover after that much abuse, but it's just pretty sad. Yeah. Especially since we, we can only really see him through clips. Yeah. You know, because obviously he's, he's a little for us, but um, it's crazy. So, yeah, that, that's, that's what I was wondering because like, they obviously slowly filtered it out. Fitness became an issue. I think, I think foreign players might have helped that. There weren't mm-hmm. as many. And all I still they're think, coming in and they're better than everyone else. I still think it's very present nowadays, though. Dude. In terms of the drinking culture, because like yeah. it's like you I mean I used no. to naively think that players would go to nightclubs and not drink. Yeah, but like no. When I read about them in the club, I'm like, what's the, what's the problem? They're in a VIP section of the club, but they're probably just with their mates. Or just having a seven up. Then you kind of think, <laughs> and you, when you grow up a little bit, let's say when you're like 17, 18, you kind of apply it, and you go, they're probably around literally mountain ranges of coke. Yeah. You know, not to mention the women. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Allegedly. Like, allegedly. You know what allegedly, I mean? You, know what I mean? Allegedly, like, you start to get altitude sickness going through one of these. Like, you know, but like... Tony I mean, Montana has nothing in a yeah. professional football. <laughs> but then there's like, you know, there's the women and then there's obviously everybody wants to give you free alcohol. You know, like, I mean, the Irish players, when they play games at home in Wrights, which is kind of close enough to where they'd be, uh, they, there's bottles of vodka in the VIP area and like ice buckets waiting for them when they come back, which... So as you say, it's still there. It's mm. definitely still there in Ireland. Definitely yeah. still there. Oh, well, in England as well. Like, I mean, yeah. I know I know, I harp on about it a lot. But uh, Wayne Rooney is an example of it in modern culture. Like, he, no doubt, after yeah. a game, goes yeah. home and cracks open a six-pack of Carpacki or something like that. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and um, Not Moe, no. <laughs> no, definitely not. No. People no. like, Moe what? But, um, <laughs> I want Moe. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. Yeah. But like you look, you even look at him, and like you look at a player of a comparable age, a foreign player like um, Fernando Torres. No, like yeah, Fernando <laughs> Torres, a man who I have particularly jumped on and tried to yeah. call this actually harass. But look, look at look at Torres. People go, oh, he's lost his pace. Players that rely on pace, like you know Rooney and Torres. Once it's gone, it's gone. Not really. Torres stripped himself down this season. Looks yeah, Torres really looks... lean and definitely not like 28, 29, 30 Yeah. And he's, and he's off. And he's kind he's of also, back. He's also, yeah, he's definitely back. Like, yeah. And he's completely adapted his game to his declining yeah. physical, like, physical abilities. And like Rooney just hasn't. Yeah. Rooney, like um, Wayne Ferry of the Panther Narrative has put up a good few pieces about Wayne Rooney. He said, oh, I'm going to start another, this is like a quote from Wayne Rooney saying, um, oh, I'm going to embark on another goal so people won't see the deficiencies of my game like my non-existent first touch. Which is true, like yeah, he does. He's just he's nothing yeah. to offer anymore because he's completely ruined his body. So it probably is around more than you think. Yeah, I would say it did did damage. I think you're right that if you hold it against the standards of the Premier League as a whole, you wouldn't really notice it because it's the done thing. I think why it stood out in such contrast to me is that it's the start of the Premier League as it was launched. So the money and the glamour is there, which means you cannot have the drink as well. Yeah, you know, you can go down to your local and get smashed in eighties football. You know, because the money was better than an average wage, but it's not sky high. Yeah. Whereas if you want to go out with pop stars and be famous like we, we just think of it as nothing now that you know footballers are the same as movie stars and stuff like that but if you want that you cannot have the kind of going into your local and get smashed yeah. every single Saturday and Sunday you know so yeah. it was yeah. the first league to embrace professionalism and it was the last one to actually act like it 
yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yes, yeah, that's a really good tagline. I really like that. Um, so is that, that that's yeah, that's all I, say, yeah anyway. I just I thought it would be of interest to people just because it was just so shocking to me, and I suppose people of an age or younger than me will probably be like, what? But anyway, um, leave your comments in the section below. Let's know what you think. Has it gone a little bit too PC? Maybe the, the hippie crack probably te- is is quite telling. To be fair too far over to the PC side but yeah leave comments below uh, subscribe to Final Third TV on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at the Final underscore Third thanks for watching